Here we go. Hey, hey, we are we are live. We are here with the Sound Advice live stream and podcast. I am Justin, the DIY audio guy, and here with me to this side over here is High Five Vega. Rob, tell us what's up. Yo, yo, yo. I'm ready to talk about some dream gear while Nick does unknown things to his camera right now. Nick, what's up, Nick? Nick's down here on the bottom of the screen. Tell us what's up, Nick. Oh, nothing. I just had some camera issues. I'm, for whatever reason, my main camera is just not cooperating today. So I have my backup Logitech camera up. And this is why you always have a backup camera if you're going to be doing podcasting. So it doesn't look quite as good as it usually does. But the good thing is I'm on the channel. <laughs> it's better than that blank screen we had a few minutes ago. <laughs> oh, that blank screen is nice. Well, I think people might prefer if I was on a blank screen and not in high def. <laughs> that might actually make the show a little bit better. But well, we know El Fuego would just say you're cutting corners either way. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> it was the CCA wire that messed the stream up. Guys, but before we get started on tonight's topic, tonight's topic is what's the dream stuff? If, if money's no object, what would we what would we burn our money on? Before we get started, let's talk about the build off. Now we announced the build off last week, and what did we say last week? I forgot what we said that was a week ago. We said that there was a build-off. We weren't going to say anything else about it except that Parts Express was the sponsor. That's all we all said. All right. So, so Rob, you get to make stage two <laughs> announcement. You got to tell them what we're building. All right. If you, I mean, drum. Does anybody have a drum roll that? Boom boxes. <laughs> surprise, surprise. We're Boom. building off on boom boxes. I feel. Boom I boxes. feel like when you. I feel like when you say that, you got to say. Boom. And you know, like boom, bop, you know, <laughs> it sounds cooler that way. Indeed. So we've got, uh, we've got some kits from parts express and we are going to see who can make the best uh, boom box out of one of their kits. Um, right. And we should probably talk about the rules just so everyone's clear on the rules. What are the rules by the way? I didn't know we had, what, do we have any <laughs> rules? Have I already gone and broken them all? We, we have one cheating. rule for the, for the viewers. And you will be voting. We're going to have a poll up, and you will be voting based on the finish, not the boombox itself, because we all do have different boomboxes. Yes. Yeah, and that's a good thing to to mention, because my boombox is different than Justin's. Justin's is bigger than High Five Eight. None of us have the same boombox. We all have something completely different. So we're not voting on sound or what it looks like. Well, we are voting what it looks like, but just the finish of what it looks like. Right. Yeah. What we do to make it our own special for, for whatever we do with our own special thing. So the basic rule that I remember is we have to try to keep this as when I say close to stock as possible. What I mean is we can't build a whole new flat pack for these. These all came with flat packs. So we have to use the flat pack we have. Now we can make changes to that, but we have to utilize those components. And of course, I guess if you ruin part of your flat pack, you might have to remake that piece. But <laughs> That, the whole point is try to use as much of that as you can. There you go. So, so in That's essence, people should be able to buy the kit and do what we did. That's right. right. Shh, man, anyone's going to be able to do what Hi-Fi Vega does. Yeah. Oh, come on now. <laughs> yeah. Hey, it is true. <laughs> the, but... only one who can, the only one who can rip on y'all is me. I'm the only one who can. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you do it? With the high five Vega flare. That's what really matters. Well, we'll um, find out. We'll, we'll yeah. find out. That's I have multiple colors of spray paint, if that's what you're saying. <laughs> oh, splatter box jokes. <laughs> yeah, that's the idea. We're, we're going to yeah. find out. We're going to find out who, um, who, who has the skills and who is inferior. That's what we're going to do, right? That's, that's wow, the yeah. point. It, you went all the way over there. Who's inferior? That's it, like, I it's pretty rough. It's kind of like... Do we get voted off like the person with the least amount of votes? Do they get voted off the show or yeah, kick them off the lives? We have, like, people on the street, <laughs> we can do that. But who like, gets in? We're, we're just three of us. <laughs> yeah. Like, this would be down to two forever. Like, oh, well, turns out the first one was permanent. And then the next build off, it'll just be a one person show going henceforth. Like musical chairs here, right? <laughs> yeah. uh, let's, the get, other let's thing get into the topic, guys. 
Well, the other thing real quick about the build-off, too, is we will have a special Parch Express guest on. Um, he's an engineer with the show, uh, and so we won't mention his name yet, but we'll let you guys know that he will be on the show with us, and he will also be able to tell us what he thinks is the best one. So we'll have like a People's Choice Award, which is you guys, and then we'll have Parch Express. Awesome. Oh, no. So El Fuego just put a nice comment up there. He said he learned to solder by watching High Five Vega videos, and now he's a pro, which is funny because there's this thing we all know and love called the High Five Vega rule. Uh, thou shalt not solder on camera, or else a NASA right. engineer will watch you and make fun of you. <laughs> I might have to break that rule because turns out me and Justin have to solder our own crossovers, so... We'll see what happens. Oh, it's good to see yeah, RBH right. in the house. We've got the the whole gang is here, all the people who usually make it out. It's good to see everybody. Thank you all for joining us on the live stream. Uh, now we're going to jump right into the – now can we jump into the topic? Can we talk about the dream, the dream car audio and home audio system? And i got a question yeah. for you guys first to start off with. If money were no object, would you still build your own? Would you still DIY? Yes, of course. Yes, absolutely. Car and home both. Rob, would you still make your own installs in the car? Well, that depends. I, it depends on what the car was. So if I have this endless amount of money and I need like a show quality build, I'm not going to build it. But I'm also going to have, you know, probably 10 vehicles. So, yeah, I'm going to be putting a lot in a lot of different things. Like your everyday driver, you'll be doing that, right. but not in your Ferrari or Lamborghini. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. I, we see. I I would go completely the other way. Like I would have like an an old original uh, Land Rover Discovery or Defender. You know, there's still like a hundred plus thousand. But <laughs> yeah, well, you know, the cool thing about that scenario is you can you can have an old beater and you can just cut it to shreds and have all the fun you want. And if you you know. If you destroy your old beater, so what? It's just a you know, old beater car. Um, and if money really was no object, uh, you know, okay, so I shorted out the entire electrical system because I didn't know what I was doing. No harm done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, see, in this scenario, I'm assuming we don't have jobs either. So we have more time for DIY shenanigans. So it makes it a little bit easier. I don't do shenanigans Anyway, I think you do exclusively shenanigans. <laughs> I'm exclusive. Sh <laughs> yeah. I mean, exclusively a shenanigan. When someone makes a, a subwoofer that that was less than a hundred bucks for the drivers and shakes yeah. the whole house. I, I'm sorry, that's just shenanigans. That's all there is to it. That's true. And, I mean, using outdated ISO. What's wrong with you, man? No one does that anymore, huh? <laughs> I'm old school. Yeah, I'm, I'm putting an ISO in my boombox too and holding it on my shoulders. Perfect. No, That's we can't favorite. do that. We can't change. We can't change what speakers going <laughs> in. And the, the Jam and Nelson's got a question. And I didn't even think about this brand. Uh, Macintosh amps for sure. They still make them for car audio. I don't think they still make car audio no. amps. But if money's no object, you can get them. <laughs> right. You can still get them for for home audio for sure if you want them. Absolutely. Forgot all about that brand. And see, this is this is interesting for me, and I wanted to do this because. I, I'm a I'm a budget guy at the end of the day, right? I'm one reason why I do it myself is because I don't have the money to necessarily pay a shop to do it, especially one that's going to do it right. I'd rather do it myself and do it wrong than pay a shop to do it wrong. So a lot of these names, uh, I've, I've seen our list, and I don't know half these brands because they're just out of sight of my usual radar. So I'm kind of excited to learn from these two guys right here what the true dream system is. So who wants to go first with something that's ridiculously expensive that if you had money to burn, you'd, you'd burn it on that. Nick, you got something in the holster. Yeah. I mean, I got a lot of things that I, I would, but uh, you know, I'm going to go ahead and go with surround sound receiver first. Now, no, you know what? I'm not, I'm not going to go there. I'm going to go with something else, something you guys will be super stoked about and none of us will ever buy, but it's really cool. There is a company out there called PowerSoft. Are you guys familiar with PowerSoft? Never heard no. of them. Okay, PowerSoft sells all kinds of neat things. Like they sell like 16 channel amplifiers, for example, and every channel can be uh, completely changed to whatever you want. So it can be doing like 200 watts while the next one can do 500 watts while the next one all within the 1600 watt, and DSP each channel. I mean, it's they're just disgusting. Now, they're also like $30,000 or something, you know, <laughs> so they're crazy. But one of the things they did 
is this earthquake museum said, hey, you know what? We need some base shakers. I think it was in Iceland. They said, we need some base shakers so that people can feel like they're in an earthquake. So they created these base shakers. I'll put a link down in the description for these guys. They created these base shakers. They're called the movers. And they put these, it, they can actually like knock down a house. It simulates the entire earthquake. Can you imagine just having one of those attached to your floor joist? You might actually take down your house, but it would be awesome, at least for those first 10 seconds. Um, and they do sell a little bit different one. Uh, I can't remember what the version is, but I put it in the link too. That's for home theater. I'd probably buy the home theater ones, but I think it'd be really cool to buy some of those big ones, make a big cement, you know, uh, attach them to the cement. Uh, and do like a, a nice real theater and have those shaking the entire theater when you're watching a movie. I think you're that would be just the, 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 sick. Uh, the Nikola Tesla uh, resonant frequency machine, huh? You're just going to break the whole house. <laughs> those base shakers are are pretty awesome, but I'd have to make sure that they have leather seats just in case someone might, you know, have an accident while listening to those things. Unless we hit the brown note, you know. <laughs> you, uh, you got a uh, you got a link you can put up on screen. You want to do a screen share of that thing? Yeah, like yeah, I'll pull, I'll pull up a link. It, they're they're not like when you look at them, you're going to be like, oh, they don't really look. That the Mimo is the one that uh, that is for just your home theater. It comes with the um, it comes with the, um, what do you call that? It comes with the amplifier and everything. So this is this is the mover. Here. Oh, wow. It looks like oh. a piston. Like, yeah, it, it doesn't look like a bass shaker, right, at all. That's crazy. So here it is. It's a patented low-frequency direct drive tactile transducer designed to kick the listener's butt. Um, so they, they <laughs> use it for 4d cinemas. You, you'll see these in theme parks, all kinds of places. And they had mentioned, and I guess they don't say it in here, but they mentioned actually using it in that, uh, earthquake music. Well, experience earthquake experience. So they're pretty darn amazing. They supposedly had a couple of these hooked up to like a floating floor, uh, at CSS. I think it was. And had people on, and people couldn't stay standing up on it. <laughs> they, they were falling <laughs> off. <laughs> wow, so they're, they're pretty sweet. That is crazy, Rob. You got one. You got one. You can share with the uh, do a screen share with us. So we can see what it is. <laughs> yeah, let, let let me let me open it up real quick. And uh, we're this is going to be three different pieces. So I'll open them up one at a time so we can share them here. All right. Yeah. So this is now we have dead air while you're trying to, trying right. to work yeah, on yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, here All we right. go. I'm going to add one to the stream here. Oh, what, what yep. are these? This is... Uh, okay. So this is a three-way component set that I'm building in my dreams here. If I have no limited money, these are the Focal Utopia BE Beryllium Copper Tweeters. So it's a pure beryllium inverted dome tweeter, and they are $2,000. $2,000 a pair. A pair, right? Bargain, cheap at twice the price. Everyone should have I mean, ten of them in their car. <laughs> yeah. Oh, like an SPL build with them? Might as well. I mean, if we have all this money, I don't see why that would be an issue. What in the world is beryllium? Oh Copper. man, have you? No, have you never seen? Oh man, have you never seen Galaxy Quest? I I, I don't know what beryllium is. I'm sorry. I'm. Yeah, I'm but have you ever seen Galaxy Quest? No, I, seen, no, I don't think I have. What is Galaxy oh, Quest? Galaxy Quest is hilarious. It is a funny movie. It's Tim Allen, Sigourney Weaver, uh, Monk, the guy from Monk. Can't think of his name off oh, the top. Yeah. Tony, um, whatever. I can't think of his last name. But yeah, yeah, yeah. All Tony of those Shalhoub. guys are Tony Shalhoub. Yeah, all of them are in it, and it's basically a play on Star Trek. It's just, it, but it's a it's a comedy, obviously a parody of it, and it's hilarious. And they have this big beryllium sphere in it that makes the spaceship go. So everyone knows. If you have an beryllium, you can go to outer space. So yeah. that's why those are so expensive is because they don't want everyone to just build their own spaceship. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why it's so expensive. They keep the price up. It's actually available widely. But <laughs> <laughs> so next up is my, I, you know, I like three-way component sets. So this is coming in at half the price, but they are still $1,000 for a pair of three and a halfs, and they are the Utopia uh, beryllium three and a half inch mid range. Is beryllium the magnet material? Is that what that is? I believe 
it is part of the cone material. Usually Focal, every series they have is based on whatever the cone material is made out of. Oh, the flax is made out of flax. Mm hmm Okay. And then I could not find the six and a half for this set, so let me stop this one and share the next one. Now, these may or may not be out of left field for you, but check these dudes out. The Dyn Audio the SOTAR E650s. Oh, yeah, those look nice. $1,800 a pair. Oh, just for the pair, $1,800. Right. <laughs> wow. So Thank we're about $5,000 in component set right here without... You know, we need DSP and all this stuff, you but see, just that's the really a bargain. Well, and that's five thousand dollars just for your front soundstage. Yeah, because you well, got to do your rear soundstage too, right? Or are you just going to no, do front usually? Soundstage? Yeah, usually cars. You're just you're just in a you're just fully doing SQ. You're just doing front. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's really cool about this is because it's on Amazon Prime, you get free delivery. So, like, I mean. You got to buy it. Delivery's free, man. Go ahead and hit that add to cart button and hit that buy now. Yeah. Let's load it up, man. Well, I heard people might be getting some stimulus checks for every single kid they have. So if you got like 10 kids, I mean, use use this link to to buy this setup and let me know how it sounds. <laughs> <Like you>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, wow. There you go. That's, that's crazy. So as crazy as that is, I want to show you something that I think is crazier. All because right, I look at it. that and I think that, you know, sure, it's a nice speaker. I have a hard time believing that it's that it's worth the money. But here's something that I think will just kind of add to the insanity. Let's see if I can share my screen here. I seem to always fail at sharing my screen. Let's see if it'll pop up. Here we go. Y'all seeing that? This is the uh, oh, Bang yeah. & yeah. Olufsen BO Play A9 fourth gen wireless multi room speaker. This is the white version with oak legs. Ooh. So this thing is a, a disc that's about, I don't know, 24 inches across and it's about eight yeah. inches deep. And it's like a piece of furniture. And it's only $3,000 for this wireless multi room speaker. I mean, you can do whole house audio by putting one in every single room. So I'm all about Bang & Olufsen, but that is the very last Bang & Olufsen speaker component I would ever buy. <laughs> but it's... I, and I, you know, it's not a DIY thing, but I put it no, up on the no. screen because I just I wanted to point out how ridiculously ugly this thing is. And why in the world would anyone ever buy that? Yeah. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like the old like 80s satellite dishes, you know, yes. without obviously the thing in the middle. But yeah, that's what it basically reminds me of. When uh, I seen it originally from the front, I was like, is this an electrostatic speaker? <laughs> but I don't think it is. No, I don't a, think it is either. Yeah, because it's domed in the back. So it's actually got a driver in there. I don't know exactly. Yeah. I'd like to see one torn apart. It's, it's just one two-inch full-range driver. That's it. Hey, <laughs> you're joking. You're joking. But I'm not necessarily it could possibly. I mean, you're like kidding, not kidding. <laughs> and that's the thing right I, I was looking at it. it is about eight inches deep you could put a, a decent mid-range in, in something that size but what the heck yeah uh, there's just so many expensive things that uh that are out there so let me stop sharing here Fa fabio has a whole wall of those i heard you know he's a big hi-fi guy fabio fabio the, the guy with the hair yeah you never seen his home like he's been at home theater magazines and and hi-fi no. yeah I've this dude hair. Has serious he has some serious gear like i think the first one i ever seen him in was the million dollar system i don't follow yeah. fabio i'm sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, you follow hi-fi though you gotta you gotta read the mags <laughs> I, I can't get past his hair once i see his hair i just everything else yeah. kind of blurs out put puts you in a daze does he so still does he. have all of his hair? I mean, because Fabio's got to be old know. by now, right? Yeah, he's got all of his hair, whether it's all real still. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, all mine's knows? real, I can promise you. <laughs> <laughs> Me so and you Nick, both. What, what do you got us? What's on the list next? What's up? So Here's here's the deal. First of all, I, I just want to say two things. One, if, if I had unlimited funds, pretty much everything at Parts Express would be – I'd probably own – Two of Parts everything, Express. you know, or you just on Parts Express. I, well, maybe fine. not, but yeah. I, I, I probably, 
<laughs> I would at least own probably two of everything because I'd want to try everything. But I, I tried to leave drivers off of this because I feel like I'm going to be building stuff. And there's so many different drivers that I could choose. I could just pick. I mean, I could go through Parts Express catalog and just pick any of them, really, and throw them on there. So instead of doing that, I tried to stick with things I would not DIY. Right. So the next one is this. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Now, this is this is something that I don't think a lot of people know about. So this is uh, the RCAM AVR 390. You know, it's a 7.2 channel home theater receiver the IMAX. Now, most people know, you know, your basic brands, right? You know, like Denon, Wait, you know, you Marantz. IMAX? Yeah, IMAX Enhanced Certification. That's a new certification that came out uh, recently in the past couple of years that, uh, that's, that a lot of people are going crazy for. The thing about this RCAM that makes it so special is this right here, Dirac Live Room Correction for Smooth, Well-Balanced Sound, Calibrated Microphone Included. So a lot of people are really into room calibration nowadays, and you should be if you want the best sound. But things like multi-EQ and, you know, everyone has their own. Yamaha has their YPOW, Odyssey, you know, all these, they cannot touch a candle to Dirac Live. Dirac Live is by far the best room correction software out there. And honestly, this is actually relatively affordable. I mean, it's like $1,600. So I'm not even going like crazy, crazy expensive with this. I mean, I could be going ten, twenty thousand $20,000 on a receiver if I really, really want to. But I just want something with Dirac Live on here because it really does make an unbelievable difference as far as the room correction software is involved in anyone that's that's into home theater knows that i i don't know do they do they do direct live and in, in car audio I, I wonder if they do i've I'm never not sure. heard of the it the only place i've seen it is on the mini dsp okay which um which is which is on my list and i'll just go ahead and mention it now because we're i was going to talk about uh, direct i mean that's the reason why it's on my list um I've got a link it'll be down in the descriptions there's a mini dsp i think it's eight by twelve so eight in twelve out and yeah. it's got the direct live. You hook up the microphone, you calibrate it. And my understanding is it's just like that kicker key, Rob, and it'll just take care of the entire 12 way system right there. So you just need 12 wow. channels of amplification and 12 speakers and, and hit the magic button and it will make your uh, car into the perfect sound quality machine. Yeah. And, and I'm just saying like any of the ones that you can get with direct live on it, I mean, that's the way to go. The only difference with going something like what you're saying is that you have to have separate amplifiers, right? Um, well, I got a question about this thing right here. All right. Does Which it I, have preamp output? So you hook up an amplifier to all those channels. It does. Yeah. It has it all preamp out. Yeah. Actually, let me show you the back. The back is actually uh, compared for a receiver. Nowadays, the, the, the back is stacked. <laughs> You know, I, I mean, nowadays you're lucky to get like three HDMI ports on the back and a couple RCAs and then you're done. But yeah, it has all this. It does Atmos 7.2.4. Um, it has all your outputs right here on the bottom left right there. Uh, so it has all your outputs. And then, of course, has your speaker outs. It has pretty much everything. And then it says the height preamps there. It's It really has. I mean, there's nothing that this. I can't think of anything that it doesn't necessarily have. I mean, it may not. I don't know. Maybe it doesn't have Bluetooth. I don't even know if it has Bluetooth. But I don't Bluetooth to mine, so. I don't really care. Sure. It might have it. It may not. I don't know. <laughs> I mean, now, the, the, the RCAM is all about just g beautiful sound quality and giving you, you know, the highest quality video and audio. So, See, I can actually see a day where I might want to buy something like that. And the reason why is the direct. Absolutely. Yeah. And it's not it's not expensive. I mean, when you think about it for sixteen hundred dollars. If you buy the mini DSP, which I, I don't remember how much minis, but then you have to buy all your amplifiers too. Right, right. And, um, so Rob, I, I see you've got queued up already. Your your next dream thing, and I definitely uh, want to you, talk about this. You want to go is, into into the mini DSP first, or are we going straight into the? I, shop you know here? what? I just think mentioning it's all I need to do because it's just a <laughs> little so. it's just a little rectangular box that you plug some RCAs into, and it does direct. That's <laughs> can, that's all. Can I ask that's you all what? you need. Which model it's was a, it that you were looking at? The, uh, the 8x12 with Dirac. It's $1,000. Um, and with no. the mini DSP, no. there's always a non-direct version and a direct version. And the direct version about, about doubles the price every time. 
So since money's no object, I'm buying two of the eight by twelves with direct. You know, I don't know if you can chain yeah. two of them together or not. Oh, Rob, absolutely. I'm talking about this next thing you got queued up. I gotta pull your screen up because this right All here right. is on my list for sure. Yeah. If if I had any money to burn, the first thing I would do is I would outfit my shop completely because we are audio guys, but we're also we like to work in our shop. And if I'm gonna buy a saw and I'm gonna spend money on a saw. It's going to be a saw stop. They might not be as high end as some of the other saws, but I like my fingers. So there's yeah. always that. And, and they're pretty nice. Yeah. That's the one that like, if your finger touches the blade, it automatically shuts off. Right. They do it with hot dog. They show you with hot dogs. Yeah. And they, they, they actually have a portable version, but you right. know, I'm assuming that I have a much bigger house than I have now. So this can have its own little perfect section laid out ready to just cut wood to my heart's delight. You know, don't, 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 uh, don't assume that maybe if you have that much money, you're living out of your car because that's, that's how you accumulate all that money. <laughs> and so this, the, the version Rob's got pulled up on the screen for everyone listening in on the, on the live stream on the podcast later is the, um, the 1.75 horsepower. So this isn't the big one. There's still the three horsepower version out right. there. So it, it can go up from there. What's this one priced at? I don't see a price on it. I um, believe this one's sixteen ninety nine. It, it. Let me see if I. Oh can yeah, you're just getting started, man. You can go. You can go way up from there. Oh on yeah. The saw stop. And he's got it kitted out. He's got the fifty two inch professional T wide oh. fence. So this thing's got this. Oh, it's four grand. Wow. It's four grand. Yeah, I was I was way off. I'm thinking of the portable saw price. <laughs> right. And so it's got a 50, you, you can cut 52 inch, you can do a 52 inch rip on that thing. Yeah. And one thing they started adding to the saw stops, I don't know if you've seen this or not, they started adding slider tables. So for an extra like two grand, you can get a slider table on it. And so I'd love to have one of those because you don't need to go and make um, sleds or anything. You can just sit on the slider table and you can just start making all kinds of crazy cuts with the slider table. Yeah, and they have they have a lot of nice ventilation features that are pretty nice. I mean, I think overall this you can get better saws than this, but I think it the price is right for what you're getting versus what you can get on the super high end of table saws. Unless you're Adam Sandler, then the price is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> is it worse that you made that joke or that we both got the joke? <laughs> Well, we're we're all around the same age. We should all yeah. get that joke. <laughs> I, I'm going to be actually feeling worse for anyone that doesn't get that joke. Yeah, the price is wrong, Bob. <laughs> we'll we'll leave wrong. it at that. <laughs> yeah, the saw stop is on the list. Yeah, for sure. I, I I'm sure. I I think uh, Nick, you got a pretty pretty nice table saw right now, don't you? I do. You have a Powermatic 66. Yeah. Um, now it has no Powermatic safety nice. features at all because this was built in like the 60s, you know, but yeah. <laughs> that thing is a workhorse, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, I would I would dream. I, I dream of having a nice cabinet saw set up, but, you know, space is limited right now. So whatever I do get, I'm going to upgrade my saw in the future, but it's going to have to be portable. Yeah. Well, you know why uh, Wilson Audio Lab said that is because he also is a king of dad jokes. Yeah. Well, I mean, you guys are in a pretty good fight, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> Battle. Uh, so what about you, Justin? We haven't really heard any of your picks minus, I you got, know, playing on smart. So what's what's some of yours? I got one right here. And it is, again, playing off of Rob's. If if money is no object, make sure I click on the right stuff here so I can I can pull it up. I would definitely get me a Glowforge. <laughs> Or Ooh. probably, actually, I'd probably go with something bigger. I just don't know anything about these things, so I couldn't tell you what to go with. And so a Glowforge can easily be be $5,000 after you start adding stuff to it. And from what I hear, they're really easy to use. I've never used one. I have no experience with them. I wouldn't even know where to find one. But uh, just being able to just cut anything I wanted, you know, make the acrylic cutouts, uh, etching stuff, it would be awesome to have a Glowforge or some other similar laser etcher to go along with my saw stop in my dream garage. <laughs> yeah. I'm all for uh, things like that because they're fun to mess around with too. You know, like I didn't put anything down. Like, you know, I, I mean, I wouldn't mind what do you call those? Like a jet, uh jet cutter for like steel. Like that would be cool. Water yeah. jet cutter. All those things would be cool to have. I, I'm all for those types of things. Cause I, you can just do anything with them. 
you know, oh, yeah. DIY anything you want. So that's cool. I, I wonder what would be the budget version, like something that would be uh, of the laser. Cause I'd like a laser that actually cuts like a, a metal cutting laser. I don't know about a metal cutting laser, but I did notice when I was pulling this up, Amazon's got some for sale that are like, uh, instead of being enclosed, they like sit on top of a tabletop and you can get those for around three or 400 bucks, which is, you know, the 10th of a price of a Glowforge. So, you know, there's, there's obtainable laser cutters out there. Uh, right. You need something pretty strong to start cutting metal though. Yeah, for sure. It, it like almost like be a CNC metal like a plasma. Yeah. And yeah. you know, Working on CNCs basically my whole life, I would love to have one of these just at my disposal. Yeah, like, we we'd also have to have like good power <laughs> to our houses. Yeah, no, like, no, no doubt. Well, and what's good about the professional ones is they use like vacuum to hold, so you don't have to do the sticky yes. tape and uh, all that nonsense. Vacuum, vacuum on and off, it, you're good to go. But I do have I do have a pick here. I kind of want to just go on the vacuum tape, like put someone on the vacuum table and turn it on and see what happens. Like if they're like, we, get we've stuck done it. Oh, yeah, what we, happened? Did they get stuck? No, it just uh, broke free. So it, it it seems like it would happen. Like it'd be like Spider Man stuck to it, yeah. but he just he just barely even inched and got out of it. So it was uh, it was disappointing. That's gonna that would be a really terrible YouTube video then if you did that. <laughs> Rob, you're itching to show this. You want to go ahead and show it here? Yeah, let's get it. Let's get it out here. What is, so, what is this? This is the high res media plater from Sony. It's the GS9. Yeah. High res aside, it's got an incredible digital to analog converter inside of it. And it's basically a volume knob with a big, you know, a big, beautiful volume knob, big, beautiful digital to analog converter. Mm. I would never buy this unit. Because it's fifteen hundred dollars, but if this was five hundred dollars, I believe I'd have to uh, I'd have to get one. I would never buy that unit because it says Sony on it. <laughs> oh man, oh. Sony burn! It's true. I, I mean, mean Sony. Sony. I mean, I mean, I know you grew up when Sony was like this big name and everything, but man, unless you're talking about an SXRD projector, I'm not having a Sony yeah. anything. Elevated standard. Did you forget? Lest we forget. I'm talking about, well, now we're talking about no money. Mon money's no object. I'm definitely not buying Sony. I mean, well, <laughs> I say that, but I, one of my, one of my things is a Sony on my list, but it's, it's a projector. Yeah. So it's different. <laughs> well, in, in car audio, oh, yeah. you'd, you'd be hard pressed to find a more high end unit for, with a digital analog converter in it. Then this, that's, that's why this one's one of the best, but there's no, I mean, you're not using a CD player unless you have one separately with it and um, the app sucks. So there is that it's not, it's not all sunshines and rainbows, but if you, if you just get up on the screen and, and wipe the one off and it's four ninety eight, Yeah. I'd have one. Hmm. I don't, I don't think anyone's going to do that. I could do it in Photoshop for you if you want, but yeah. it's still going to cost you. $1, well, $1, Amazon, or... like uh, Amazon, we, are you going to price match this or, not <laughs> yeah they're gonna now, say not point, will the technology be more obtainable or is right. it one of those things where this is just a halo product and because it's a halo product it's always going to be a 1500 hundred dollar item well i hope that it's one of those that it's a halo project that then filters down into the into the lower rungs or i can do like i do with vehicles and just wait till everyone's tired of them and then i buy them <laughs> and then I'm happy. That they depreciated. Yeah, right. Rob, <laughs> Robbie the Hansen, you yeah. might as well just go boss or pile. <laughs> yeah, boss or pile. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I mean, money's no object. You might as well go all out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I hear they have some 10,000 watt amps. Anyway. Well, well, th this, is, across the lake. Th th this, is, this is exactly why there's no CD player in this. That is, it is known that that they cannot make a good skip reduction CD player. Nick, yeah. what have you got? Is this your Sony projector? The only yeah, I mean, since Sony we're talking you, Sony, it's just the only said, thing Sony you would ever use. Well, so Sony SXRD projectors are pretty darn amazing, but look at the price tag on this thing. I can't see it from here. What's it say? Sixty thousand dollars. Oh my! Oh, you word. can own this or a new car, uh, a nice new car, if you want. <laughs> 
I could own four cars for that, man. What are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah, exactly. But this particular projector is the best of best, obviously. Now, the cool thing about this is it's actually native 4K resolution. So a lot of projectors, they say they're 4K, but they're really not. They're like a 2K and then they kind of simulate the 4K. So this is like a true 4K, has like infinite, basically dynamic contrast. The thing is just unbelievable. But it's $60,000. So honestly, even if I had that much money, I don't even think I would buy that. So instead of probably buying it, because I, I don't know, there's a certain point where I'm just like, I don't know that I would really, really buy that. So I'm going to share my other one that I actually probably would buy. Um, and this is, this is actually more obtainable for people nowadays and probably more, not that it's cheap. It's still $5,000, but, uh, this is it. This is the Sony SXRD. This is their cheaper one. The other one had 5,000 lumens. This is 1,500 lumens. So you can see, like, there's a big difference. And lumens is brightness, right? So the other one's, like, three times brighter, but it's also, what, uh, six times the price? No, no, it's 60,000. So, I don't know, 12 times the price. So, you know, you could do something like this, and it would, it would, I think this would, you, I think 99.9, percent of people would probably be just just happy with something like this yeah so so thing. it gets you it gets you you know 90 percent of the way of for a tenth of the price yeah well 12th of the price <laughs> yeah 12th yeah, of the price so yeah i mean that's that's kind of it i don't think i could spend basically my children's college tuition on you know no on on a projector but if money was no object, then I would I would consider it because honestly, it's the last projector you will ever buy in your life until next year, when another sixty thousand dollar projector comes until out the new life. sixty thousand yeah. dollar projector comes out, and you say, "Oh man," and that's that's kind of one of the hard things I have with technology is because you buy things and then like the next year you're like, "Oh man, this new thing came out," and then you want to sell your sixty thousand dollar projector, and who's going to buy a used sixty thousand dollar projector? Right. Yeah, that's not that's not one of the, I mean maybe someone's got one on the market right now that we could pick up for 10,000. I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> so we're selling all of Justin's cars to buy one. <laughs> I would say what, about the, what would about be this kind of thought experiment? The kind of people that buy $60,000 projectors are the kind of people that will always buy the best slash most expensive or not even the best, just the most expensive because it's the most expensive. And I'll, I'll give you I'll give you an example. It's not anything I'm going to pull up here, but I think about um, the the Jailed Audio 13W7. It's a fantastic speaker, but I honestly believe the main reason to buy it is because it's so expensive. That's the kind of person who buys that says, you know what? I'm the kind of guy who buys uh, the anniversary edition and pays double for this thing. Yeah, yeah, I, and that's that's kind of where I'm at with it. And that's why I think I'd go with something like this VPL VW 295 ES. Still the SXRD, still 4K HDR, should be plenty good enough for anything I do. And it's only $5,000 compared to $60,000. So I would probably go something like that. And I think I'd be happy for the next 10 years. I really do. <laughs> All right, I've got one for you here. Uh, if I can get it to come up here on my screen. Oh, it's not. Let me try this again. Well, uh, let's see here. Screen sharing is a complicated thing, apparently. <laughs> All right, so let's try this. Here we go. Um, here we go. This is, um, can y'all see this? It's a Morel uh, Titanium Series 6-inch mid-range, 4-ohm mid-range. No. You cannot no. see it? It did not share. Oh, it did no, not you share. Didn't share. But I see it in my, my uh, mind's eye because I know what it looks like. Well, this is, uh, here we go. I have to hit allow. There we go. There it is. <laughs> Sorry for all the windows on the screen there. And so this is uh, what I did is, I mean, again, like I said earlier, this kind of expensive stuff is kind of outside of my wheelhouse. So I just went to Parts Express and went to the mid ranges and just sorted by most expensive to see what was there. And so this is uh, a $405 uh, mid base. And I mean, it, it even has a Hexatech underhung voice coil and a titanium bobbin for whatever that means. And I'm just looking at this thinking, wow, $405. Uh, I wonder I wonder why that has, it says it has a hybrid Neo uh, ferrite motor. I wonder why. 
I have <laughs> no idea why. Maybe just to be more expensive. And it looks fantastic. I love the carbon look. And I'm sure it sounds amazing. But wow, that's <laughs> that's a yeah. real bargain right there at $405. I bet you, I almost bet you that is, is that actual carbon fiber? I, I would I would hope so at that price. Yeah, I, I, I'm sure it is, and you know that's a that's a fantastic cone material for for drivers if you can do it. But I'm gonna take us down just a notch in price and show you another three way component set here. So this is expensive, but it is attainable if you wanted to save for it, and it's yeah. the uh, the Dyn Audio So Tan. Six and a half three way component set. It's six hundred and ninety nine dollars, and this is kind of like a, a like if you bought this, you'd be very proud of it in your system. I would at least. Yeah, I think that that looks like a good good price, really good price for that. Yeah, I think so as well. H have you ever messed with any Dyn Audio, Justin? I've never, never messed with Dyn Audio. Uh, have you, if you have some, is that right? Didn't you, didn't you sell some recently or have some for sale? No, uh, I've had them before, but it's an older model. So it's been a long time since I've had some. I'd, I'd like to have some new ones. And maybe at some point I will buy this very set. Honestly, they are dynamite. Oh, but I'm <laughs> You know, 700 bucks isn't that far out of range because it, it's easy to spend 700 bucks on a front stage if you're not careful. I mean, it's it's in line with like a JL product, right? Right. And and I really like the crossovers that they do. And I don't know if they have a, a separate pick just of the crossovers here. But they're... Zoom, zoom in close. That's cool. They're really nice crossovers. And the tweeters are super, super smooth. They're they're just they're all around very nice systems. Yeah, I could I could see that being a good system in a car. Nick, what all right, you what next? you got? Um, uh, so I'm gonna go back to TV because now that we have the home theater set up, we need the living room, right? I mean, that's kind of how it goes. And this is this has been something I've wanted for a really long time, and I still might buy one. I'll probably end up buying the 65 inch, but if money was no object, I'd buy the 77 inch LG OLED. These things are the most beautiful televisions you can buy on the market, hands down, none. And it's not crazy expensive. Once again, it's four thousand dollars. Don't get me wrong, but for a 77 inch OLED, that's not insane. I mean, these things used to be, you know, you're talking, you know, twenty grand or so. So. You know, they've come way down in price, but this thing is amazing. If you guys have never seen an L LG OLED, you need to go to like Costco or Best Buy and take a look at some of their displays. The blacks are superb and the contrast between like black and gray, you know, like you, you watch like a movie and sometimes when it gets too dark of a scene, it's kind of all turns like a black or it's really like a light gray, even though it's supposed to be a black, it just doesn't look very good. This has no problem with displaying those at all 8.3 million pixels control it's just unbelievable so for me if if uh it was no if money was no object i would get an lg oled and i think i would just go ahead and get the 77 inch because i'm sure i would have somewhere to put it so and it comes with dolby vision hdr 10 has everything on it so well and then rva said earlier why would he need a 4k tv with 360p eyes his 360p eyes. <laughs> well, he's got 360p in each eye, so you know, 720. Close yeah. enough. Hey, yeah. Well, yeah. I'm telling you. Have you guys have you guys seen an LG OLED before? I've not. Oh, um, man. only in the showroom on the freaking ultra bright, uh, vibrant settings in store settings. Yeah. yeah, but if you take a look, even at the reviews of these things, like go to uh, ratings.com. I think is one. It ratings without an A. Uh, they they test these things out and they'll show you that it basically does the whole color gamut, which is, I mean, you just, if you think about it, even like, I don't know, when you really think about it, there's no TVs, no other really TVs that, that really do that. So for me, just buying it for that color would be something that would be just really, I don't know, beautiful. 
Yeah, we we don't buy TVs very often around here, but I had to replace a DLP projector TV in the bedroom. Mm. So we ended up getting a Hisense, and it was one of the cheap bargain bin ones, which it looks fine. But I'll tell you what, the speaker's already blown in it. So now if it plays something basic, you just get that sound. So Jesse said, uh, OLED is amazing, and when they have a 100-inch screen for $5,000, I'll replace my projector screen with this one. Some people are saying that they would rather have the the Sony. You, you can, but the, the LG OLED is typically what is rated among the best with all the ratings as far as the best picture quality of all the televisions. So for me, if I money's no object, I'd, I'd go with that. And I, I, I agree with Jesse. If they had a 100-inch screen... Even if it wasn't five thousand dollars, money was no object. I would buy one instead of a projector. Hands down. Oh yeah, my, my, you know, the money no object decision is very different than reality. So you know, yeah. there are tons of things you would spend money on that you wouldn't otherwise. Oh yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. All right, Bob, Justin. what you got for us? All right, I, I do have some. I didn't have it pulled up, but I do have a home audio pick. Let's get straight into it, so you guys can critique my pick or think it's awesome. Here they are. The Warfendale Linton with stands. Ooh, red mahogany. I have They're never pretty. heard this particular set, but I have heard these this brand of speakers, and I like the way these ones look. They're kind of old school, but then sitting on top of a weird stand, right? Yeah. So the stands the- are like four legs. With uh, something below them. What's on the bottom of that stand? Is it something functional? They're pointy, or they're pointy feet. Is, oh, is the, the mahogany is. thing on the bottom. What is that? It's just a, a oh, shelf. I see now. Okay. Yeah, it's just a yeah. shelf for. Oh, why is it wanting to show me? Every time it, go, it goes to here, the 85 Ooh. edition. Yeah, you can put your records down there. And they there do. It, it, it's kind of like. Um, it is a little Clips Heresy mixed with something you'd get from IKEA. Yeah. I like the spikes on the bottom, though. Those are nice because they're carpet spikes, and then they have the little metal discs down there. So if you're on yeah. hardwood floor, you can put those down. That's cool. Yeah, that, I like that. Yeah, I, I love to have this pair of speakers to test uh, cheap amps on uh, for YouTube. So, y'all, if y'all go click on Rob. Don't do that. If you had unlimited mon- money, you should just let me build you some. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just I'll build you I'll build you something nice. And it, it, Nick Nick gets uh, two of every speaker from Parts Express and puts them in one system. In, <laughs> in, <laughs> yeah, I agree with Wilson Audio Labs. Though, if I had to get some speakers that were just the B and W Nautilus, might be might be it, man. Those are beautiful speakers. You guys seen those? No, they're like the three D printed thing I had, but they're bigger, and then they have a mid range on top and a tweeter on top with the real long. I don't know. Tails on them, I guess, is what you'd call them. I, I, I have seen one like that. I didn't know they were the uh, the Bowers and Wilkes. Nice. Yeah, they're they really nice. All right, Justin, you, man. What are you doing, man? We got, we got to hear from you. I'm trying to share a screen, so let's see if I can do it. Did that work? Hi. It worked that time, didn't it? It did. So this is one that it isn't a big um, bank breaker, a, a bank breaker like these other ones. But this is something I've always wanted to try. This is the Tang Band W8 8-inch neodymium full-range driver. So this is a big 8-inch driver with a got a wizard cone and a phase plug. And it's supposed to be a full-range driver. And when I see people use these builds all over the internet, it appears that they're like in transmission lines. And 228 mm-hmm. for a single driver, that's a little bit high for just, hey, I want to have something to play with. But if money were no object, I'd get a couple of dozen of those, and i just try 20 different ways of building them. You know, what can you do with a single driver? Because we all know that the, the perfect scenario would be a single driver that could play flat from 20 to 20,000. And so I think this might be a fun one to, um, to give a try. And it... Has inverted surround and has the word whizzer in it, so you can't go wrong. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Wizard comes I mean, for the win. Wizard. Five millimeters of X Max. There you go. So reminds I mean, me of Weezer, the old band Weezer. Now, now, here's Weezer's the not old. All. If you buy four, <laughs> they're not they're new. Sixteen each. You get that discount when you buy uh, in a quantity. So there yeah. you go. So buy four. 
<laughs> buy, hey, buddy, buy, no buy object. Why not buy eight? You know. <laughs> All right, I'm going to share one because this is something I think anyone can get could use nowadays, and you don't have to necessarily buy this one. But this is the Crown CDI 6000. I think this is a really cool amp, and I'd buy this to power my subwoofers in the house. All right, now this thing is crazy because it's 6000 watts total supposedly. I mean, I don't know. You know, we'd have to have Wilson Audio Labs actually test it. But it has DSP, 20 user-defined DSP presets are available, which is just amazing. Crossover EQ filters, delays, I mean, all the works. And then when you come down here, at 2 ohm, it can do 3,000 watts per channel, which is pretty crazy. So you could easily hook up, you know, a good four speakers to one side, maybe have eight subwoofers in there and hook them all up on there or or of course you could get if you don't need that much power you could get something like the uh 4000 which is you know 1200 watts at 4 ohms or 1600 watts at 2 ohms but still you should be able to power multiple subwoofers in your room with something like that i mean now 6000 watts on 4 ohms if you can't get at least four subwoofers you should be able to get at least four and, and maybe maybe even eight depending on what subwoofers you're using off that should be pretty sweet, I think. Yeah, I mean, is so it's six thousand watts. Um, I, what kind of is this two twenty volt or is it like a three phase plug or something or is it just? No, it's I don't see how it's supposedly yeah, one twenty. I I don't know. Either. I mean, you're definitely got yeah. to run a dedicated circuit for this thing, right? Like, right. It says it does seventy and one hundred and forty volt um, loads. So it is important though. It does say that 3000 Watts, it has an asterisk by it is at 1% distortion while the other stuff was rated at 0.5% distortion, which it says somewhere. I'm not sure where it's at, but. And I could clearly tell there. that by year. I mean, that's a huge gambit. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Especially on, Especially on a subwoofer. Yeah. yeah right. <laughs> That's exactly what I was going to say. So what I want to know is what subwoofer would you pair with something like that? What if, what if, if you got a big subwoofer on your list? Well, I, 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 I have I one. Kraken, I mean, would definitely be one. Or Rob, Rob, you want to show us a big subwoofer? What is the big yeah, subwoofer? put it on there. This that? is the subwoofer we'll put on it, a pair of them. The uh, Sundown yeah. ZV24. What are you talking inch. about? We could put like four of those on there. Sub, subwoofer. And when they say 2,000 watts RMS, you could put 10,000 watts RMS to this sub and it would probably take it. They are very, very cautious with their subwoofer ratings. Hmm. But That's nice. It, you know, if I had that sub, I'll go ahead and kick it over into the amp. I, I would have a pair of those subs. You know, I'm not a big bass head, but if I'm going to do it, I might as well do it. And why not get the 12,000 watt RMS Sundown Audio Salt 12? Ah, oh, the salt, the full bridge, full bridge, right? Right. The full bridge, the whole shabam. It's a monster. 4,000 bucks. I mean, that looks like it would fill your whole bucks. trunk Why just you there. Now, man, you got, you got all that, uh, all that YouTube wealth, you know, <laughs> oh, YouTube yeah. wealth. if I saved up every penny since I ever started YouTube, I could buy a salt ant. <laughs> Or not. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Wait. Derek says salt isn't the full bridge model. That's the SFB. He's right. Salt is oh. a, this is a Korean uh, built class D. Oh, okay. So and SFB that should just prove to Arena Rockman that we are reading the messages as they go. <laughs> yeah, yeah we're just not reading, reading yours, messages. Arena Rockman. I'm sorry, bro. <laughs> <laughs> the thing about reading the chat message is like we're interacting, we're trying to put these different windows and stuff up, and you see us failing in that process and trying to keep an eye on the chat can be really challenging. Um, the reality is if you're watching a live stream, if you really want to get up on the screen, you've got to you gotta drop the super chat. I mean, that's the only way to guarantee that that we're gonna see what you say. That is um, true. I mean, hey Justin, uh that's, but put El Fuego's comment on there. But you're right. The El only Fuego. way you're guaranteed is, is Super Chat. <laughs> or, or you can. Oh, yeah. <laughs> the CCA hey, wire. It, they, make, <laughs> they make four out CCA wires, so I don't want to hear it. So, El Fuego, El Fuego said 12 or three, three runs of them. Yeah. Asking for fire. <laughs> yeah, there you go. 
I would do it. I would do it just to make everybody mad. You're not. What else I, we got? Guys? No one would get mad if you burned your car down. Who would get mad except for you? <laughs> your your wife, maybe. <laughs> your kids, if they were driving it, but no one else. Now, Sony, it, you'd be surprised. People get mad about everything nowadays. That is true. Only Whether because it them or not. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's only because they're behind the keyboard and no one knows who they are. Right? Yeah. <laughs> who is that guy? Right. Not there. What right, we I got, got, I got a winner up? right here for you guys that you're going to want to see that I think is a, a good one to think about. If we had, you know, money is no object, what would you do? Not and, no um, Kimber Cable. Oh, come on. It's not sharing. I'm having trouble with the sharing on my end. I don't know why, but it seems to be fighting me. <laughs> you guys remember in like grade school when they always made kids share? Justin was never good at that. Never good at sharing. Yeah, I can't figure out why. I click on the little buttons and it's just like fighting me back. So well, yeah, while I work on that, y'all go ahead and try one of yours. What what have y'all got? Um, yeah, sure. I have I have one pulled up. I mean, I most people aren't gonna probably be as interested in this, but this is the o- OSD. I, I've never heard anything OSD, but I've heard that they're going out with some really cool stuff. They have this class H amplifier, which is pretty cool. It does accept uh your you know, your XLR connectors as well as your RCAs, which is nice. So if you have a really nice preamp that uses XLR, so some people will buy preamp and amplifier separate. That's where this would come in handy is when you buy like that preamp by itself and you'd plug these XLR connectors into the amplifier. I think this would be a pretty cool uh, one to try out. It's uh, 240 watts by five, which is weird because it says 240 by five, and then it says 120 by five. So I, I don't know what to what to believe here, but it is a class must be H. RMS. You know, it must be peak. Uh, it could be different ohm to rating. I, I didn't actually look too much, but it's it's very flat, plus or minus. Uh, it's actually minus 0.5 dBs from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Mm. It just looks like a really nice thing. It says all ch- 180 watts per channel at four ohms and 120 watts. So that must have just been a typo up here, 240 by five. I, I guess I don't, I don't know where the heck they got the 240 by five at, but either way, I think that would be a really cool one to try out that OSD and it's not expensive. It's 700 bucks. So it's something that once again, I would still feel good about, I could still send my kids to college. I wouldn't be upset. And I, and hopefully, hopefully it's nice. <laughs> All right, I've got mine working out. Apparently, I was lagging or something. So let's let's throw this up here. Uh, I saw someone mention earlier that they would do a a kipple, and so this was one that I would go with as well. I would do an audio precision because if you're going to have all the money to throw at all the stuff, you would buy every last piece of test equipment you could possibly get your hands on, and this would be one of them. I have no idea how to use it. I don't know what model I would want. I completely you know don't understand what they do, but I hear they're awesome, and if money were no object, I'd have several of them just laying around the house just whenever I wanted to use them. Yeah, that'd be fun. If if I had if money was no object, you'd never see a test video from me again. Be, I'd be like the Mr. Beast of car audio. I'd be buying all this crazy crap, going around to people's houses, fixing up their systems. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be right, doing right. all kinds of stuff. But yeah, it, I would still have this piece. I gave away Jonathan Price's Tahoe, that kind of thing, right? Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> um, Derek, is that what one cost? Are they twenty-five to fifty thousand? Is that? <laughs> yeah, that he's sounds got, like he's fun. got two on order. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, I'd have multiple SMD amp dynos lined up on a wall. I'd have a couple dozen of them and, and everything you need, so I could test multi-channel amplifiers all at the same time. You know, read six or seven channels. Why not? <laughs> Go all in. Yeah, for sure. I have one thing to end on here if you guys want to end on it. Well, I it wanted is, to real quick, I just wanted some? to well, I just want to answer this guy's question. He asked what a class H amplifier is. It's it's basically a class A B amplifier. Um it, it it does increase efficiency though. So that's that's really what a class H amplifier is, but if you really want to look at it, it's class A B. If you just want to break it down for you, yeah, class H. Okay, go ahead. 
Hi fi. Yeah, yep. So this one I think is not unobtainium and it's probably the best value in a big car audio amp from a big manufacturer you could get right now. Uh it's the kicker twenty four hundred dot one. It's not the most powerful, but I think at its price point it's probably one of the best. Man, it's not even stereo. <laughs> 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 Got well, him. If money's no object. You can buy two of them, and then you can. <laughs> we, we're doing that true dual mono design here. You do two of them, and you're good to go. Dual mono. Dual yeah, mono. dual mono. We don't play around here. Is but that the same with your boombox? Is dual mono? No, I've got special things for this boombox that you guys can't even imagine. Why don't you tell us if we can't imagine? <laughs> <laughs> I've got it. I've got it halfway finished out, sitting right here. Oh, good. Show it. On cam- That's even it. better. Nobody just can see the it until camera just a little. March hey, guys, 21st. anyone in the chat, right? Pound me if you want to see a, a sneak peek preview of High oh, Vegas. Don't Boombox. type in pound me. Type in pound <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone now, quick, pound me. It's not- oh, no. We just got, we've got Justin's channel demonetized. This has been downhill. <laughs> no, no, no. we're not gonna go there yeah. <laughs> it's called a hashtag for a reason guys oh yeah, yeah. Geez. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> hashtag me whatever it's the same thing you guys yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i honestly did not catch on to that until right now <laughs> well i would say ask your wife it was, which it was a pound before it was a hashtag let's just be honest well there. i know we all know that but the kids these days they don't know Oh, jeez. <laughs> I know. I always I, I told someone to pound something and they're like, what? They're like, yeah. my, I actually said it to my wife once and she's like, what are you talking about? I was like, the pound signal, you know. No. Yeah. Okay. You mean hashtag? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's it. True voice of reason, not a dad joke. Not even yeah. a joke. <laughs> well, that's I mean, that's more that's of like a, a drunkle joke. Like, you know, you got the drunk uncle. That, that's oh, kind of one of his jokes. <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> so no one wants a sneak peek of your boom box. So either they're all terrified to see it or uh, yeah. <laughs> or I scared them off by saying pound instead of hashtag. <laughs> well, I don't. Uh, I'm, yeah, I don't think they want High Five Vega to hashtag, hashtag uh, pound them. <laughs> <laughs> we're getting all these crazy the hashtags stream, people who are listening uh, on the uh on the podcast right now people are are just putting random stuff with a hashtag in front or behind it so that you can just imagine the 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 uh the double entendres yeah well um, one, one guy told told you guys to pound t toys diy audio that's not very nice we're gonna <laughs> robbie you're getting booted someone else told us to pound it pound you it's not very nice you got come he's, on he's man. never told anyone to hashtag sound or hashtag sand hashtags oh pound, 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 yeah. pound. <laughs> the british hashtag. pound cake jesse wins the wins it right there with pound cake yeah. <laughs> okay yeah i'm glad we changed it to hashtag then okay fine yeah all right we'll, we'll hashtag everything from here on Som- out sometimes <laughs> newer is, is better but it depends I, on the context yeah. All right, guys. Other than three awesome boom box, what have we got going on? What's coming up in the future for your channels? Uh, Nick, what, what have you got coming up? I actually have some really cool things. So a lot of people don't realize that uh, speak, uh, speaker drivers uh, specs will actually differentiate when you put a lot of power to it. So um, they'll actually change when you do that. Now, I have a guy from Cartesian Audio. He's the owner operator of Cartesian Audio called Clement. He's going to come in and talk to you about that phenomenon as well as other audio things. So if you guys have been really interested in kind of understanding more in depth, those types of things, we're going to go a live show Saturday, 1030 a.m. I believe. So, so a live Central on Standard channel, Time. Live on my channel. AM on which Saturday. Will, yes. Which will go, which will do all kinds of cool stuff there. And then uh, I also have a video out on Cartesian Audio earlier this week. And, of course, we got the boombox build-off, man. And I got to work on that. I was supposed to work on it today, but I got stuck working on toilets. Nice. <laughs> no, it wasn't so, nice. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a few videos kicking in the can. I don't know which one I'm going to finish. 
I, I'm halfway in the middle of a build for my son and his car. You may see some of that. I've got another top 10 video coming. Um, maybe not the top 10 that people think, though. And, uh, of course, the boombox build. I'm, I'm doing my finish on the boombox. I've got cool plans, and I hope they all turn out like uh, they're in my head. Well, I don't have anything in the. Uh, um, I usually have something ready to go by now for next Friday, and I, you know, my patrons would have access to it. But I am running behind. I've gotten behind a little bit. I had some uh, uh, stuff kind of got in the way. My mother had surgery. My mother-in-law's birthday, and so this weekend was not uh, not a good weekend to do DIY projects. So I'm really hoping that I can get back in the groove. Maybe steal some time one night this weekend and get a video up. So it, it'll be a surprise to me and you when you see my next video. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's how it is for me every week. I, I will say they're asking when the date is for the boombox completion. We will all upload our videos on the 21st of March. That's a Sunday, is that right? It's on a Sunday. And then the 22nd, we'll also have a poll up on, I believe, Nick's channel. And we can kind of link to that in our community tabs. Yeah. So we'll, uh, we'll talk about them. We'll show them off and brag about them on the 22nd on the live stream and do the do the post the poll and on the on the uh, Sunday the 21st right. is when you get to see how awesome my boombox is. And Hi-Fi and Justin both said that they're going to be very upset if you don't vote for me. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I'm trying to turn this into a popularity contest. Oh gosh. So <laughs> so we'll see. Seriously, I, I would be upset if someone voted for me just because they like my channel. I'd be like, nah, man, vote for the one you really like. I don't yeah. care. Not me. Not me. Vote you know what? Me. We're 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 <laughs> you know we're razzing on each other a little bit, but this is this is all in good fun. Um, you know, we were talking about this project and we said, you know, at the end of the day, we're all actually gonna win this because we get to build this cool boom box. Yeah, I mean, sure. That's and, what we said. <laughs> if you watch next week, you will find out the model of boom boxes each one of us has. So there's yes. that to look forward to. So I'm going to get back to Robbie. Robbie, no, you don't have to hear them to vote because we're not voting on sound because we all three have a different boom box. Right. And they were kits sent to us. So that we didn't design the sound part of it. We're just designing the outside we're basically dressing them up all right so just yeah. think of it like that so it, it's whichever a, it's, one you you like the dress better you you pick that one it's a beauty pageant it's a beauty pageant it's yeah. a beauty pageant yeah right and, and this is the thing because the reality of, of of kits like this is what makes the kit interesting is what you do with the kit when you get your hands on it, how you put your style on it and i, I love one thing i love about my home theater speakers is they're, they're tritrix kits Nobody on the planet has home theater speakers like mine. You, you can't find them anywhere. No one else finished them like mine. No one, the little flaws there turned towards the wall. No one, no one else has those, right? So yeah. it's, it's, that's the cool thing about it. And we're all going to put our special little twist on these things. And we're just going to see which one of us uh, has come up with the most creative and just did a better job of executing this little twist. So all I am doing is putting shellac on the MDF and that's it. That's cool, I want to shellac the MDF. Yeah, Wait, here's come with the MDF. Mine came with MDF. Oh, I got plywood, bro. I, I know, know you guys got you, nicer man. boxes <laughs> than me. I got the I got the crappy kit compared to yours, I think. But honestly, <laughs> I mean, I, I have a lot more work to do. You guys can just like stay in yours and you're done. I have to like do all this work to. I don't even know what I'm gonna do to mine. All oh, right, to... I'm just gonna stain mine because that's gonna win oh, the contest. I sure. bet you that is what you do, and I bet you do <laughs> win with that. So stop <laughs> acting like, oh, I'm not gonna stain mine. <laughs> Wow. Well, Same. you know, the, the funny part is we truly don't know what each other are doing. And we have no idea. That's why I really <laughs> want to sneak peek. And no yeah. one no one would hashtag me because they didn't want to see your build yet. I so oh yeah. oh wait, there it is, right there. Yep. Okay, I, I just read it. El Fuego said he's cutting corners, that's why. Yeah, man. That's how I do. I round off all my corners. I'm not a rookie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's what he meant. <laughs> hey, that, it doesn't mean how I substitute your reality and create my own. Mm. That's how it works. This is 2021. That is true. <laughs> we should probably get let the yeah. go to bed, man. It's yeah, it's 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 almost 10 after. I think we need to wrap it up. So um well, all right, guys, I'll just do the wrap up then. Uh, thank you all for watching and listening to the Sound Advice live streaming podcast. 
High Five Vega, Toys DIY Audio, and the DIY Audio Guy. And we are out of here, and we will see you on the next adventure.